focus on strengthening the criminal justice system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Darley. To wind up this debate, we have seven motions for resolution. That concludes this debate. The vote will take place after the end of the following debate. Now we have a debate on the situation of ethnic minorities in Iran. We'll start with the authors of the text. Mr. Pashka is first for one minute. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioner. Iran political representatives have had uh, problems with respecting internationally acknowledged human rights uh, in the long run. Ethnic minorities uh, suffer due to the radical Islam policy carried out by the government. Our appeal to Iranian authorities in order to respect the rights of minorities to use their own languages in communication in private and also in public and to allow minorities uh, to practice their religion and to stop discrimination uh, and persecution of min minorities is a very important one. It is important because even though the arrogant uh, Iranian administration doesn't do any changes today, they know that Europe is watching and the whole world is watching and they will know that in future they'll be hold, held responsible for their arrogant minority policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pashka. Mr. Tavares is next for two minutes. Thank you, President. This is a worrying subject, minorities in Iran. The situation is very serious and it's getting worse. The political situation in the country is already tricky as far as the majority is concerned. Their rights are being violated and denied when they vote in elections when the results were falsified. It's much worse, though, as I said, if you are in an ethnic minority. You can end up in prison on a long sentence and you live under worse conditions than the majority of the population. The justice system is completely biased against ethnic minorities. Women from ethnic minorities are even treated even worse than women are treated generally in Iran. And the quality of schools in ethnic minority areas is much worse than normal schools in Iran. So it's all very, very worrying. To this, one should add the increasing use of the death penalty in Iran. People are being persecuted for crimes related to their sexual orientation. Very young people are executed as well. We want, of course, to call on Iran to put an end to these practices and change the treatment it meets out to ethnic minorities. Although, of course, we have very little hope that the Iranian government will listen. What's important is that the Iranian government at least think about what it's doing and thinks about the wind that it is sowing with these practices. The Iranian regime is sowing the possible whirlwind for the future as it ignores the rights of ethnic minorities in Iran today. One day I feel that they will bring down this government. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tavares. For one minute now, Veronique de Kaiser. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, President. The Iranian population is made up only 50% is Persian, and the other 50% um, is made up by other ethnic minorities. Uh, the United Nations body, anti discrimination body, has already noted the fact that there is marginalization of the minority groups, and there are several, the, the Ahabs, the Azeris, Balochs, Kurds, and Turks, Turkmens. The, the Arab Awazi group is a very small uh, minority group. It's just a tiny fraction of the minority problem. Now, this group, the Awazi Arab group, th there's a 
annual um, uh, protest in April. In 2011, the protest uh, led to 15 deaths and several injured. This was reported on, on Twitter and Facebook. So what we're talking about in the resolution is the case of six Awazi prisoners. These prisoners are awaiting trial. It's very difficult to get reliable information on the case. The only source is uh, social networking sites, but I think it is right that we should name them and that we should call on them to be um, receive a fair trial is um, an important point to make. Thank you, Mrs. de Kaiser. Next up is Mrs. Schaake for one minute, one and a half minutes. Commissioner and colleagues, it's safe to say that all Iranians are repressed and live in a culture of state-inflicted violence every day. This sad reality of the Islamic Republic must not be overshadowed by the negotiations on the nuclear issue on which a new round starts early next week. In fact, for those who believe that change in Iran must and will come from the Iranian people themselves, human rights are a strategic issue and can never be traded in a zero-sum game in relation to the nuclear program. This House highlights the situation of ethnic minorities specifically today. Minorities in Iran continue to be discriminated against and harassed. Peaceful demonstrators are imprisoned, imprisoned after trials that do not meet any international standards, and the treatment of prisoners in Iran is well known across the world for its harshness. Torture, rape, and executions are common practice, practices we continue to, to condemn based on our belief in the universality of human rights, but more importantly, we urge the Iranian authorities to stick to their own commitments as stated in their constitution. Non-Persian women face double discrimination as members of marginalized communities and as women in Iran, facing laws that specifically limit their rights. We urge the Iranian authorities to free all activists who are currently imprisoned for their peaceful advocacy of minority rights and to respect the right of ethnic minorities to use their languages in private or public and in particular to guarantee education in these languages in accordance with the Constitution of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Thank you, Mrs. Schaake. Mrs. Kohler is next for one minute. Thank you very much. Two years have passed now since Mr. Razi was killed because he was a Kurd. We saw a prison sentence of four years imposed. In 2009, Mr. Swada was arrested. He was accused of apostasy and in international and national legislation that is not a crime. And then the death penalty was imposed and the membership of this uh, ethnic minority seems to have been condemned as a crime. The Ahwazi Arab minority is not specifically mentioned. Minorities only have a few seats in the parliament and they can't pursue their uh, own rights and traditions as a result. Thank you, Mrs. Bergia, for one and a half minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. A few days, Kurds were commemorating the second anniversary of the death of Mr. Karanga, a 31-year-old who was subjected to many years of imprisonment and torture for his beliefs. Six Awazi Arabs were imprisoned where Nick de Kaiser mentioned their case. Their crime was to defend the rights of minorities, the group that they belong to, condemning uh, murders against their minority group. Yet there are so many minority groups, Baha'i, Azeri, Baloch, many others, 
and it's not a good thing to be a woman in Iran, uh, to be a member of an ethnic minority. Iran, where the number of capital punishment cases is in, keeps growing, especially being applied to minors. There are so many resolutions on the subject. We all know that the Iranian authorities are not going to do anything. But there are so many other things we could have talked about, perhaps more usefully, the 10-year prison sentence um, for Leila Azana, um, who was uh, the winner of the Sakharov Prize. Thank you, Mr. Wojciechowski, for one minute. President, thank you very much. It is very sad indeed that Iran, a country with uh, such a long and beautiful history and culture, an important country, is run these days by a regime which fails to uh, respect the basic rights of its uh, citizens, a regime which has far-reaching nuclear aspirations, a regime that engages in a policy of oppression towards uh, Christians, but other, but also other ethnic minorities. I think we should react to uh, this. There is little actually that we can do because the Iranian authorities are, are resilient uh, to any forms of criticism. But this does not mean we should stop. The European Parliament should um, uh, repeat time and time again that we uh, will not tolerate this kind of uh, behavior. We also need to support the Iranian opposition. And this is, I think, uh, what we should do in order, in order to pressure the Iranian regime. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wojcikowski. This concludes the round of speakers on behalf of groups. The next speaker is Mr. Posselt for one minute. Mr. Posselt. Herr Präsident. President, Iran is often seen as a monolith. It's a Shiite unit, but it is a multicultural state that has a multi-religious order. There are some Christian minorities that are doing quite well, part of Christian Armenia. Others are being persecuted uh, without let or hindrance. The uh, Azeris and then we have non-Shiite Muslims who are suffering, the Baha'i are suffering particularly as well. And this is why our task is to perceive Iran in its entire multiplicity and to make sure the religious minorities are, are protected and supported. And contrary to a previous speaker, I am of the opinion that it does make sense to deal with Iran on a regular basis. This is something we did with the apparently monolithic Eastern Bloc, but one day there'll be a free Iran with many peoples, multi-ethnic in, uh, in diversity, and they'll be able to live in freedom as our partners. Thank you, Mr. Postle. Mr. Oyland is next for one minute. Violations of the rights of minorities in Iran come by no means as a surprise, that as the devastating human rights situation in the country has been reported and debated in the European Parliament a number of times. We are calling upon the authorities to eliminate all forms of discrimination and urging them to allow freedom of association and religion, while freeing a peaceful minority activists from prison. Unfortunately, we already know that our resolution will be disregarded, as they have been for a number of years. Instead, I would encourage the EU to engage in dialogue and cooperation with opposition groups in Iran and abroad, and help them in their work towards overthrowing the current fundamentalist regime. The change in Iran will probably come from within the country, but we should use the opportunity of empowering the democratically minded Iranians to speed up the process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Oyuland. Mr. Gobacik is next. Thank you, President. Iran is a country 
in which violence and uh, abuse of human rights has become a political tool and the hatred is aimed mainly against the Christians who have been prosecuted for very many years and have given life for their faith. It is not easy to be a Christian, a Catholic in uh, Iran, it's very easy to lose your life in such a situation. The European Union, with its roots deep in Christianity, is obliged to protect and defend these people, and this is why we should speak against the situation in Iran. The right to uh, worship, the right to one's own religion, is one of the fundamental rights, and we must not tolerate what's happening in Iran. This is why I appeal to the European Commission to do their utmost in order to protect Christians in Iran. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kovacic. This, Mr. Silvestris is next. The legal system in the Islamic Republic of Iran has condemned some citizens recently to a total of 600 years in prison and deprivation of their civil rights. There are obstacles in the work, placed in the way of people trying to find out information about their minorities because human rights defenders aren't allowed to gather information in the Islamic Republic. They also prevent information from flowing freely. But despite all this, we can learn about the trend of things and the pressure on minorities is being increased in particular, I stress in particular, Christians. I don't see why we should be afraid to uh, mention this, because it's true. But all forms of Islam, even Islam, which is different from the Shiite faith, are being frowned upon. Many of these faiths are simply regarded as being illegal in Iran. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. Silvestris. We now move to the catch the eye procedure. Now, we have too many requests uh, for the floor on this burning issue, but let me give the floor first of all to Mr. Sonic for one minute. Thank you, President. We have been uh, seeing blatant uh, cases of breach of human rights uh, for years now in Iran. Political, uh, social uh, rights are uh, breached. People who uh, demonstrate in favor of human rights are treated very harshly. Iran uh, uses uh, the uh, capital penalty with alarming frequency which means that a lot of citizens of the country are in a situation of total and constant threat. Minorities are oppressed, are harassed, people are afraid of being arrested and uh, killed. We have to remind the international uh, community time and time again of this. We have to appeal to the Iranian authorities to have a, uh, an amendment to the Constitution that will uh, respect uh, human rights. Our Parliament has postponed uh, uh, our visit to Iran uh, twice now already, and I think this is wrong. Thank you, Mr. Sonic. Mrs. Kretu is next for one minute. Thank you very much, President. I also believe that we should send a very clear and firm message to the Iranian authorities as to the need to immediately annul the death sentences pronounced against members of the Arabian minority. These people risk being executed at any moment. The Iranian government should uh, give these uh, people a fair trial and their families have the right to know what their fate is. I also think we should strongly urge the cessation of torture in detention center and uh, inquiries in the abuse that has been perpetrated so far. Last but not least, we request the Iranian authorities to eliminate the uh, uh, capital punishment and to relinquish persecution of 
uh, ethnic minorities. I believe we should cooperate more with the United Nations on this thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Vlasak is next for one minute. Hello. Mr. Chairman, when discussing ethnic minorities' uh, rights, we should also uh, mention rights of Iranian people in Ashraf, in the refugee ca camp uh, in Iraq, where over 3,000 people are surviving in uh, disastrous conditions, without sanitary conditions, under constant pressure and threats. So we have to uh, call upon the High Representative and uh, Vice President of the European Commission, Baroness Ashton, uh, to uh, uh, appeal uh, for uh, the solution of this uh, burning situation as well. Thank you, Mr. Flasek. Mrs. Jedziewska is next for one minute. Thank you, President. The very difficult situation of the minor of minorities I in Iran is strictly related to a lack of fr religious freedoms in this country. Um, persons who spoke here uh, during the debate spoke in detail about the prosecution of minorities, in particular Christian minority. I do not want to repeat that, but I would like to clearly stress that I feel especially touched and moved by the fact that uh, capital punishment is administered to persons who have changed their religion, their faith. I believe that this is a radical and very brutal abuse and violation of the freedom of religious denomination. This should not be happening. Thank you, Mrs. Yajewska. To conclude the Catch the Eye procedure, Mr. Skinner will have the floor for one minute. Mr. Skinner. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Veronique de Kaiser was right when she said Iran was not a monocultural society, uh, although it is obviously a Muslim, Muslim republic. I can say, though, that as all the speakers have said, it is very dangerous to be an ethnic minority or a religious minority in Iran. I can support this motion, therefore, which promotes the universality of, of human rights in Iran and across all the ethnic minorities and religious groups. Of the groups, as speakers have said, the numbers are many. Those that we know of that can be easily identified by size or religious identity. However, converts from certain religions into other religions also face potentially a very uncertain future and may be bigger than some of the ethnic minorities that we know about in Iran. So like others in a room, I would wish to see the broadest capture of ethnic minorities so that the communities like the Assyrian Christians and others can be added and included in our statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Skinner. We conclude the Catch the Eye procedure. And to conclude this, uh, Mr. Dali, the Commission. Mr. President, Honourable Members, as has been said, Iran is a mosaic of ethnicities, mounting up to at least 40% of the country's population. Main ethno-linguistic minority groups are Azeris, Kurds, Baloks, Arabs, Turkmens, Pashtuns, Armenians, Georgians, Assyrians and Jews. They are largely located in the periphery and far from the power base Tehran. Despite constitutional guarantees of equality, persons belonging to minorities are subject to an array of discriminatory laws and practices. These include land and property confiscations, denial of state and parastatal em employment, restrictions on social, cultural, linguistic and religious freedoms, resulting in human rights violations. Common practices include imprisonment for consci co conscience, unfair trial of political prisoners, corporal punishment and use of death penalty, as well as a systematic restriction on movement and denial of certain civil rights. Very often, ethnic minorities of Iran do not get a fair share of the benefits of natural resources present in their region. For example, the water of Lake Orumyeh Basin in the Azerbaijan provinces or oil revenue in the Arab populated province of Awaz. The EU has raised these concerns at the level of the United Nations. They are included in the General Assembly resolutions on human rights in Iran 
last adoption in November 20, 2011, and the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination has also underlined discriminatory practices in the country. The EU does not take a selective approach to this question. The EU acts on the basis of its principled position and it has a keen interest in the preservation and protection of the rights of persons belonging to minorities across the world. Iran remains a case of grave concern. As in other countries, we are constantly monitoring all examples of repression and discrimination based on sex, thought, conscience, religious belief and ethnic identity. In recent Council conclusions, the EU has deplored the widespread repression of Iranian citizens, including persons belonging to ethnic and religious minorities. We have used and are using all tools available to raise awareness and call on Iran to respect principles of equal treatment and non-discrimination. This is no different from the way we act in other cases. The HR personally and the EU have issued statements, declarations on ethnic and religious intolerance in Iran and have undertaken the marshes on individual cases. For example, in June 2011, the EU carried out a demarche on Tehran, on the, in Tehran on the death sentence to four Iranians of Kurdish origin. The EU is also deeply concerned with the discrimination and massive oppression of the rights of religious minorities. Vice President Ashton has issued a large number of statements on the pre precarious situation of the Bahi um, minority. While the EU remains open to discuss human rights, issues with Iran, including the status of persons belonging to minorities, it has decided to, on targeted restrictive measures against individuals deemed to bear direct or indirect responsibility for repression. 78 individuals are now on the EU human rights sanctions list for violations in Iran. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Commissioner Dali. To wind up the debate, there are seven motions for resolution that have been tabled. That concludes this debate. The vote will take place now.